Hi, class. How are you guys doing? Okay, in chapter, I'm sorry, in week five, we um, we concluded our look at the principles, the six principles of design that we're covering in this class. We're kind of switching gears a little bit to look at the use of images in, in visual compositions. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Some of the best practices in image use, and I'll just give you a kind of a brief summary lecture on the use of images. I do want to reinforce that there are some supplemental resources, of course, as usual, regarding images, <clears throat> excuse me, and those are located in the course announcement. Welcome to week five. If you just scroll down underneath this gorgeous Volkswagen ad, we come down here and we have these three additional um, resources for image use. I highly recommend you, you, you take a look at these guys. It's really, really important as imagery is, uh, it's one of the top considerations in, in any uh, design composition. So, um, and I, you know, it can be summed up like this, guys, a picture is worth a thousand words. We've all heard it and we all know it's very, very true. So sometimes the best way to communicate a message is, is through a strong image. And I went through that in our introductory video, uh, comparing the difference between ads that use very strong imagery and ads that use less intense imagery or less meaningful imagery in that, um, uh, you know, a very, very powerful image can tell a story as we see here. Okay, this image is 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 really telling a story. Now, it's, it's a little bit incumbent on the viewer to kind of use their imagination to draw the connection between, in this particular case, uh, precision parking, automatic parking and available in Volkswagen, and this uh, image of the porcupine that's neatly tucked in between two um, uh, bags uh, filled with water and goldfish. So imagine what would happen if this wasn't precisely placed in there. And the same thing we can see when the viewer makes this transition from this image to the message as it's associated to parking vehicles. So imagery use, as we can see, is very, very powerful and is able to support a message um, with limited type if it's done very, very, very effectively, as we see here. Okay, back to uh, sometimes the best way to communicate is through a strong message and uh, image. And I think that Porcupine and Volkswagen ad is a great example of that. Images make pages more visually appealing. Absolutely, there's no one that can argue that. Okay, if we look at a page that's just filled top to bottom, left to right with text, we get nervous. I know we do. I mean, we have to admit, we look at it and go, I don't want to read that. Even if it's a simple ad, if there's too much text, think of the Apple ad. Think of that vintage Apple ad and all of your reactions say, I don't really think I want to read through this. And we don't anymore. We don't. There's just too much other, uh, our, our attention spans have been affected by the amount of media we receive on a daily basis, as well as the way the internet has kind of shifted our attention spans to more rapid dissemination of in information. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's very, very easy to note that images make pages much, much more visually appealing. <clears throat> um, images will influence the mood or the style. I think that's pretty much self-explanatory. And um, images, of course, can be decorative or communicative. That's, you know, talking about multiple images in the same document. Um, illustrations, photographs, charts, diagrams, and or and or clip art can be used. I'm a little bit on the, on the fence about clip art. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but if, when you talk about imagery, you talk about illustrations, photographs, charts, or diagrams, okay, all of which enhance the visual engagement of any uh, composition. We have photographs. Um, photographs, um, I, I, photographs can be more credible than, than illustrations or clip art. I think clip art is the least credible of the, of the your choices of image. Um, the, the main thing I want to take to talk about images, uh, photographs, is that uh, they've got to be good quality. You can't put a, a poor quality image, a photograph in, a, in in any composition, specifically an ad. Best way to check is to, to zoom in on that ad. If you see pixelization or compression artifact, then that's a good indication that it's a lower quality image. Now, we've been trained to look at resolution in images, and, and, and I think it's very important to note that just because an image might say uh, 300 PPI high resolution, just because an image has those properties doesn't mean it's a high quality image. So I quite often have students say, well, wait a second, it's a 300 PPI image. And I say, that might be the case, but still you zoom in and it's not a high quality image. Quality often doesn't relate hand in hand to resolution. So keep that in mind. The best way to check an image for a good quality is to zoom in and take a very close look. Um, and again, I do want to reiterate the, the fact that images are seem to provide a little bit more credibility than than um, 
illustrations or a special clip art. Uh, photographs can be purchased for use online. Um, there's plenty of stock houses available. Now, again, I just want to reiterate, uh, it's an incumbent on students to be ethical about uh, the procurement and presentation of any um, images. So you want to make sure that they're, they're able to be used, okay? Um, Royalty-free images. And in education, I just want to reinforce that in education, there's a lot of leeway. Okay, so you guys really shouldn't be too concerned about uh, getting in any kind of legal trouble for using an image if, if it's not properly cited, etc. Okay, so we've got a lot of leeway in education. Um, we, I talked about good quality. Uh, you know, you, you got to make sure that photograph is, is highly cohesive with the mood of the actual composition. So that's a very important consideration. Um, it, Think about the price, okay? If you're getting a, if you have a, a job and you're 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 hired to do a magazine ad, and let's say just for round figures, let's say you're paid a thousand dollars to do the magazine ad, okay? And that is your quote, all right? So that means out the door. So would it make sense for you to use an image if you're if you're making a thousand dollars on a job? Is it is it going to make sense to use an image that costs you seven hundred dollars? Absolutely not. So a, a price is a, always a, a viable consideration. Uh, that's more in a, in a professional setting or a freelance setting, less in an educational setting where you, you are able to, to uh, have a wider latitude in, um, in using images. Um, a couple of terms associated with image cropping. Cropping refers to removing some or, or some or some part of the image. Okay, so for example, cropping this image right here would say if we were to uh, you know crop this out right here, make the image this big, or if this ad we crop it to half a page instead of a full full page. Do you see what I'm saying? A crop is just a, basically it's it's um, selecting a portion of the image. Uh, flopping refers to changing the direction of an image. So, for example, um, I, I use the example here for flow. So, if if you, you were to just mirror this image, so, so flip it over, so reflect it on its ver uh, horizontal, I'm sorry, its vertical axis, so that the, the the ad, the leg was on this side and the zipper was on this side. That's that's called reflecting or flopping the image, and it's a it's a very very good technique, specifically in regards to um, a good compositional flow. Um, I want to talk about illustrations. As, we, I, as I said, illustrations can be diagrams, maps, charts, cartoons, or drawings. Um, I do want to talk about clip art a little bit. Um, illustrations have a time and a place, guys. I, I mean, obviously, if you have a more of a serious ad, you're not going to use an illustration unless it's a very, very, very dynamic illustration. But let's say you, there's an ad on, on let's say, uh, immigration. Is it, would it, let's say there's an ad on, on uh, refugee immigration and we look at um, um, uh, a, a, an image as opposed to clip art. So clip art would add a, an air of, of very relaxed air, almost an informal air that wouldn't be suitable for such a serious um, subject matter. Uh, clip art, guys, I'm on a fence about clip art. I do not recommend using clip art ever, ever. And the reason I say that is this, is because, you know, we come a point in time where if someone asks you a question about your design and they ask you specifically as a student uh, in a portfolio process where your, your work is being reviewed or, or at, in the eventual situation where you're sitting across the desk from a uh, potential hiring professional where they're looking through your portfolio and they say, oh, that's an interesting illustration. Did you create that? And you look at them and say, no, that's clip art. Your credibility gets shot. So my recommendation is to create your own illustrations or your own clip art to be used. So that's just one possible scenario, negative aspect of scenario of using clip art. Okay, now we can use type as image, and these are some really great techniques to use type as image. Be careful with this, guys. Just be really careful using type as image. Um, it's sometimes overdone, and it works. Uh, it's 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 a little bit non-effective once it's overdone. So there are a few different situations where we can skew the word, distort the word, drop shadow, things like that that will enhance the uh, message itself. Uh, okay, and we'll just wrap this up with four visual rules. Don't jam illustrations together. So again, you know, it's basically following our our. Uh, uh, 
rules of, of principles of design that we have been studying for the last several weeks. Add variety and contrast the page by you, by varying the size of images. I'll try to pick illustrations that look like they might belong together. So don't use two different styles of illustrations in the same composition. And then of course, use appropriate images for the page. And again, that goes back to the, the, the mood you're trying to create in the composition. Okay, guys, so that's what I have for image use. And again, I just want to reinforce the importance of chump checking out these outside resources, which really take this lecture to the next level. All right, guys, um, any questions at all uh, about use of images, please let me know. Thanks, everyone.